Hello and welcome to ATP Report. It's the Katie and Barry show, which means joining me live from London, England is the terrific ATP European correspondent, the brilliant Katie Hopkins. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Hi there, Barry. It's good to be back with the ATP family once more. So your mayor, Sadiq Khan, um, who just does dumb things uh, mostly to irritate you and me, uh, now has an event celebrating cultural diversity during COVID. And uh, I guess that's supposed to make all the Brits feel really good about having no job and no freedom and no ability to go outside. And I saw the um, flyer you sent me. It looked like a lot of uh, cultural diversity excluding white people. Uh, did you see it the same way I did? Exactly. You just wonder, does he do, do these things deliberately to get at people? I don't know, to annoy regular Brits. Uh, where does he think this is headed? What, why does he think any of us care about diversity in COVID right now when England is a mess, a complete mess? And finally, why does no one look like me in any pictures anymore? And what, you know, Diversity only comes in one color if you're Sadiq Khan, and that color is black. Yeah, I, I noticed that. And uh, I looked at the poster and uh, it seemed rather undiverse to me is the way I saw it, which leads me into my next question. We are overwhelmed in the States. I mean, it's everywhere that corporations especially are putting out this propaganda that they are training their employees with, Katie, that all white people are bad and racist from birth and need to be cleansed of their original sin of whiteness. I, I'm not making any of this up. It's the truth. And it's the largest corporations in America and it's spreading like a wildfire. Has it gotten to your side yet? Yeah, absolutely. And for the longest time, you know, white people have told me um, you know, they feel like they're at the back of the queue. They feel like a second class citizen in their own home. They don't feel like they belong in England or the UK anymore. It's very sad, but particularly, you know, they're specifically targeted against white. So if you're white, you can't apply for some jobs. If you're a white person, you can't get the day that you go to to help you be selected as a police officer. You can only go if you're black. It feels like we are being disadvantaged for being white. It's not about equal treatment. It's about putting white people at the back of the queue and that, and that can't be equitable or fair. Well, we used to say that we bragged here that our society, our culture, our advertising, our government, our military, our police, our firemen, we were colorblind and we just cared about how people behave and how they treat others. And now, well, those things are important, but it's more important what color you are. And I find that institutionally placing racism above behavior. Yeah, I think, it, I think it's right. And I also think it's some gut level, Barry, you know, on TV, radio, other places, you want someone that, to be in that role as presenter because they're just really, really good at it. And as soon as they start putting people, you know, a square person into the round hole, you can feel it, it doesn't work. We're losing that kind of connection we used to have because everything has to be done by color and life isn't about color. I think we're more colorblind than the left and people forcing this agenda. Well, speaking of colorblind and institutional racism, what's with the potato? When I had little kids, one of the funnest things we ever did was we'd go to the market and buy a bunch of potatoes and put them on the kitchen table and open up the Mr. Potato Man <laughs> box. And we would build Mr. Potato Head and Mrs. Potato Head and the kids' potatoes, the boys and girls. And you know, you stick the eyes in the nose and the mouth and you just have a delightful time. And then you eat the potatoes with dinner. Um, <laughs> Now, now, Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head, Katie, are sexist, and they should just be called Potato Head because, according to the toy manufacturer, 
gender neutral with potatoes is superior than gender naming. Um, could, could that be any dumber to you than it is to me? It couldn't be more dumb. I, I'm slightly distracted because I call Boris Johnson a potato in a wig and I have him on my desk at all times. He's here. So this is my own potato in a wig that I use. It looks a bit like me, I realize, but also it's when I'm doing an impression of Boris. But it's so bizarre. And I wonder, Barry, what's gonna happen? Are we the last generation who are gonna find this stuff really odd? Like, are our children just gonna grow up and decide normal now that we just have potato head? There's no Mr. and Mrs. You know, where's the, are we the last of the outrage is what I mean. Well, you know, it's symbolic of the bizarre cultural change in, in the world that somebody at the manufacturer in this case thinks naming a potato, a potato, a food with plastic things stuck in it, Mr. and Mrs. is a bad thing, which is a great transition to the trans movement since uh, Biden has become president here, uh, the unwinding of the, I can decide what sex I am and decide what sport and which side of the locker room I wanna go into by just changing my name. Trump pushed that back to reality. Meaning if you're Bernie and you change your name to Barbara, that's okay. You just can't be in girl sports. Well, Biden wants to unwind that so if Bernie decides to be Barbara and set every record in college and uh, world competitions, Biden says that's fine. And you get to pick your locker room and you get to pick, pick which group you shower with. Has that crazy stuff gotten to you yet? It has. And, you know, it's when they speak of it, it sounds all very well and good that if people want to be something and, you know, we want people to feel emboldened and all the rest of it. And, and those sorts of tenets of that, I agree with. I want people to feel comfortable and have a great life. Great. But then you look at the reality of it and you look at the visuals of it and you see this enormous cyclist, for example, this monster of a man who's now, a, you know, Rachel in their lycra next to the little girls that are, you know, cycling and they're, they're big, strong women, but they look tiny or the rugby players, you know, A, it's dangerous. It's clearly physically dangerous. B, how demoralizing is that for women who are competing fairly and are just beaten because of hormones, testosterone and the rest of it, muscular structure. And C, it is just so bizarre. And I do wonder as well, Barry, when there's such real problems that we face, why are we contriving more nonsense you know like when we were talking about potato heads someone's being paid to go into work and come up with that nonsense it, it's just it just it's beyond belief and the thing is we know it's not going to get any better anytime soon we think it's going to get worse well my my own daughter when she used to compete um on big time tournaments in martial arts in judo um i remember we would go to all day tournaments at the national level. She was quite good. And I would watch the boys, you know, in her age group. Um, and they were brutally strong. I mean, oh my gosh, with muscle development, even at 16 and 17, they looked shredded. And next to the girls of the same age, it would be absolutely no contest. And you know, when I think about how long and many years and how many hours and how much driving and dedication my daughter put into it. And, you know, she wasn't world class. It, it's not like she would go to college and have a scholarship. But if you work 10, 15 years on something and show up at a tournament or a competition of some sort and Bruce is Barbara and you get squashed like a bug, not because you're not terrific, but because the truth of the matter is men are genetically more predisposed for strength and stamina and muscle development and bone density, which is why the boys don't compete against the girls. It's, in my opinion, biologically insane. What do you it think? It is. And you know, Barry, there's also something, isn't there, like a cultural thing about this. Like, so I have a son. I'm trying to teach him, you know, you open the door for your grandma. You always stick up for your sisters. You always look after your sisters. 
what happened to that? I would be ashamed if my son wanted to compete against girls. I would be ashamed that he thought that was the way to win. What happened to that teaching? Why are these kids missing that teaching? Well, chauvinism and the treating of women respectfully the way we were raised is now sexist. Just as there can't be a Mr. and Mrs. Potato, um, there are only potatoes. There aren't boys and girls, it's all equality. And you can self-identify as a deer or a lizard or a something. And now that's okay. It's completely biologically and sociologically, in my opinion, insane. Welcome to the new normal. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. It's not a normal any of us want to be part of. I'm pretty sure of that. I also think there's a lot of us that think the way we think, Barry. And even though we can't hear us, there's a lot of us still. Well, I hope you're right. From your mouth to God's ears, as my late mother used to say. Thanks for coming on today, Katie. Uh, delight as always. And to all of our viewers out there that haven't yet signed up for our text message alert system, please do so. Just take out your cell phone in the United States and text the word TRUTH to 88202-PUSH-SEND. We'll sign you up. You'll get all of our stuff for free right on your cell phone, always free. And all it will take is about a five-second investment. If you want to do it on the web, you can go to americantruthproject.org, sign up there, and you'll also get uh, several chapters of my new book, Because You Asked, just free for signing up. Thank you for joining us today for ATP Report. I'm Barry Newsbaum.